Today is Wednesday, May 13th, 2015. I'm Dennis Wendell, Curator Emeritus with the Ames Historical Society. With me is Teresa Beer Larson operating the video camera. We're here at Green Hills to do an oral history interview with Mary Kearns. Sitting beside Mary is her daughter, B.J. Kearns. Incidentally, the host of her own program on local community radio station, KHOI. How's that for a plug? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both, Mary and BJ, for taking the time to visit with us today. Do we have your permission to record this interview? Yes, of course. Thank you. Mary, for the historical record, please tell us when and where you were born. You were born in Ames, I believe. I was born at home in Ames. And what was the date? January 1st, 1917. Jean. That was a big year for the flu, if I remember. You're right. When I was 10, year, 10 days old, I had the flu, and Dr. Bud's bless his heart, took care of me day and night. My, my. They first plunged me in cold water, then hot water, but I did survive. My goodness. 10 days after that, my father fell and broke his ankle. So my mother had her hands full. Indeed. Well, those were the days when doctors made house calls. He lived just a block over. Oh, amazing. Ben Budge. Yes. yes. That's Dear old Dr. Buck. It's a big, big name. Budge. Budge, yeah, right. Well, that's great. Well, let's talk about your parents. That was Clarence McNabb and Imogene McNabb. Now, were, were they from Ames also? Let's talk about your parents a little bit. Okay. McNabb certainly has a Celtic uh, influence. Was he Scottish? A Scotch and Irish. Mm -hmm. hmm. And your mother, what was her maiden name? Harbaugh. Harbaugh. It's German, mm -hmm. but her mother was strictly English. Oh, interesting, interesting. Um, you know, I knew your father. Yes. Yeah. Because he was my barber. Yes. Yeah. And Laird Harris, one of his employees, was also a barber there. Over his years, he had three different generations of families that he could say he had taken care of. My land. Now, you said he had several locations for his yes. shop. Do you remember those? Well, the first one, i just not quite sure. It was somewhere underneath a bank or somewhere, but mm -hmm. I don't remember that one at all. Mm -hmm. And then he had the Hotel Munn shop for several years. Right, the Sheldon Munn. And I, I believe it was about in 1927 when the Memorial Union opened. And oh, so he, right. they offered him that position. And he also had started up a beauty parlor, and they went with him to the bar reunion. But, but that only mm. lasted a year. Mm. Uh, at that time, there was only about 2,200 students, and he just couldn't make a living mm. there. So right. he came back downtown, and he worked for the men that used to work for him. Mm. Ed Mitchell, mm. Howard Adams, they were well known. He worked for them for a while, and then he decided he'd rather work for himself. So he started a little shop on the corner of Kellogg and Maine for a while. Mm -hmm. And then he, he eventually, his last place was in the middle of the block there by the bookstore. That's the one I remember. Yeah. He was there several years. And Laird Harris was his handyman. That's right. And uh, Fred Colburn. Do you remember Fred Colburn? Vague, vaguely. Mm -hmm. And Max. Bemis was it? Beeman. Yes, uh, Beeman. Mm -hmm. And okay. there was another man. And they had such a good time. They were such a jolly bunch of fellows. They liked to play tricks on each other. <laughs> uh, my folks bought eggs from the country, and this person brought them in and left them in the shop. And one day, I don't know whether it was Laird or who was, 
glued the eggs and the egg hardened. Oh, so my brother went to take the eggs out there were all <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> and one other time, I don't know, Daddy had an old rooster. Somebody gave him an old rooster and he didn't want that rooster. So he went up and he put it in Laird's car, but he didn't, what he didn't know was that Laird was going to be gone for several days. Oh, no. And so when they got back, they found this rooster had made his home in the car. Sometime later, they were having a picnic dinner, and then his wife baked a big cake, and she had the claws from this chicken. On that, she decorated a cake with the claws from that old rooster. They had a real good time. <laughs> I remember they had the latest jokes. They had the best comic books. You know, I compare men's barbers with women's hairdressers. They knew their customers intimately. They joked around. They had their hands on the heartbeat of the community. So the question is, when Curly came home at night, would he discuss things that his oh, definitely. customers had mentioned? Yeah. Uh, he always told us what went on in this day, who came in. Mm -hmm. One of his stories was a class of mine. Her name was Barbara Nelson. I don't know if you would remember oh. the Nelson girls. But anyway, she was married. She had a couple of little children, and she, she had left them in the back seat of her car that was parked in front of Daddy's shop. And they were hanging out the window and just carrying And he was just furious. And I, I, I was so embarrassed. I found out he went out and scolded Barbara for leaving her kids out there in the car like oh, that. My yeah, he, he loved children, and he thought that was the right to leave that. Oh, my I don't goodness. know whether she changed her mind or not. You said he was particularly good with college students. Definitely. I've forgotten the names, and there were two that just, uh, I think all of them came to him for mm -hmm. their haircut. And, um, they were just such good friends. They had him out to a lot of their fraternity dinners and celebrations. Oh, wow. And quite often, some of them, I, uh, well, not only the fraternity, but the wrestling fellows, he was real oh. fond of them. And he, they would go out hunting, and then they would come home. And uh, Mother would mm. make pancakes for them. And of course, mm. I was small and cute. <laughs> So I got to sit on their laps, <laughs> and they fussed over me. <laughs> they loved my mother's pancakes. Um, you told me once about the coach that couldn't hold his booze very well. It what? A coach oh. that couldn't hold his booze very well. Well. I guess he was an alcoholic, and he chose Saturday night to do it. And so Daddy quite often steered him home on Saturday night. Oh. I believe that's why maybe I got some advantages, because I found I was eligible for the tumbling team at Iowa State oh. Girls Tumbling Team. I was eligible for swimming lessons. My goodness. Because the coach is the swimming coach. Right. So I'd rather think I benefited from his helping the coach. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, you Was Curly pretty handy with tools, that sort of thing? I think he was, a little bit. He made that little box over there, hmm. that little pink box. Oh, okay. uh, he, well, made, I... he made this pink box for Mother to have her clothes pins in, and then he made her a little bench for her basket, and he, he remodeled our first house on 9th uh, and Clark. Uh -huh. He did the remodeling there. Uh -huh. I still wonder if the big colonnades are in the middle between the living room and the dining He built some beautiful colonnades. Very typical of that era. And he took out a bedroom and made a big long living room that had a winding stairway that went up. Mm. And I, I was quite small. But I do remember him working on that stairway. Hmm. I think you said that 
he lowered a light switch yeah. just for you. When, when, they, um, when they were putting in the lights for the front rooms, he called me over, I suppose I was about three or four, to see how I could read, because they were all with the button ones, oh, you know. Right. So he called me over to see if I could be sure that I could reach all of them. It was the porch of the living room and the front room. And I just felt very important that he needed my help. Well, indeed, indeed. Now, you were not an only child. You had a sister as oh, well. I older brother. They mm -hmm. were. F my sister was five. My brother was four years older than I was. Right. Now, I'm curious. Where you went to grade school in Ames? Was it Beardshire or Roosevelt? Central was down. The old Central building. That yeah, from for the uh, middle City school, Hall. right. I mm -hmm. went there to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Oh, Roosevelt, I bet, was your school then, if you were on Clark. Does that well, ring a bell? I went to Central for kindergarten, and then uh -huh. Roosevelt was just new, and I was in the first grade at Roosevelt. Oh, that's it. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Well, you were the other day mentioning some of the teachers, the same names I remember, Verna Schmidt as principal at Central. Oh, Miss Cress. Uh -huh. Bertha, well, she was a science teacher. Miss, Miss Galloway. Oh, yes, yes. She was so pretty. She had white hair, but oh, she was so pretty. Was that know. Mae Gallagher? Gallagher. Yes, I or worked Gall for her. Gall Gallagher, I think. Gall Gallagher, yes. Galloway. Gallagher, I Gallagher. think. Yes. Yeah, she was always one of my favorites. Right. Miss Chris. Right. And I think there was a Miss Beck that nobody liked. <laughs> she didn't like the students very well either. Oh. One of the students found cigarettes in her desk and it made her real angry. Oh, I can imagine. Girls didn't smoke in those days. How about Edna Bauer? For music. Oh yes, the music she, she was there for years. Mm-hmm. Because that was high school. Right, right. Oh, in high school there was Miss White, Miss Wood, and uh, Mr. Harms. And, Harms, okay. Uh, Miss Haddish, Miss Spots. Now, how about Kate Mitchell? No. She was just down at the South School, school mm -hmm, South. Mm -hmm. She just had that down there. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. She was a wonderful lady. A wonderful lady. You said that she would have a big Buick and pick yeah. up school uh, kids. She, she, she uh, ha helped with a program for the young people in the summer months. Mm. And we... Uh, Cars Pool had a free swimming morning every Wednesday morning for the children up to mm -hmm. I suppose up to twelve. I don't not sure then. Mm -hmm. And she would load up her big old Buick and come around and pick up some of us junior high kids so we could go out and be guards and then we could stay in the afternoon and swim for free. Oh wonderful. The first time I did it I learned my lesson. I stayed all afternoon, and by night I was burned to a crisp. <laughs> so I was more careful. I said, but it was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful day. They, they, uh, they'd always put the count in the paper, and it was usually around three hundred to four hundred young Amazing. kids would come that day. Amazing. Now you worked there as. And then I worked there for about three years. One of the more dramatic. Do you remember Freddie, uh, not Freddie Poole, the football captain? Donald? Was it remember. Donald's? You know, he was diving off of the diving board and he hit the cement wall. Uh, but Freddie Poole, who oh. most, a lot of people knew Freddie Poole, oh. he was on the guard and uh, this football player kind of bashed up his face, but, he, but that was a very exciting thing. That was one of the worst accidents I ever remember happening. It's legendary. I've heard about that. Mm -hmm. This is Teresa asking a question. How did you learn to swim? 
by myself. No, no Red Cross instructors? No. My brother and I were just rag fish. We didn't we needed need any. How much were you paid to be a lifeguard at Carr's pool? Probably twenty five cents an hour. I land. Well I I worked as later in later years, I worked in the check room, and they had the baskets that were in the rack. And it wasn't long before I had big blisters on my thumb, pulling those baskets out. Then we we tie the tags on the side of the shoulder of their suit. So you knew both Dad and Mom Carr. Oh yeah. In fact, Dad's car, mother, Grandma Carr, helped my mother with me after I was born. My goodness. So I knew the family way back. My goodness. I knew Emma's father, or mother. Mm -hmm. Did your families do things together? Not a whole lot. My, my father, we considered hard work. He, he, was, he worked six and a half days. Oh, he worked all every week on Saturday, and, he, and it was always late on Saturday. Occasionally, we had a well. Our big thing was a big dinner on Sunday, and it was his day of rest because he we worked so many hours and late. So as a family, we did we went to visit relatives once in a while in Carroll, mm -hmm. but no other. Back to um, Carr's Pool for just a second. Tell me about how you kept the children uh, to to be good. Did you have to blow a whistle? How did you keep children uh, in line? Oh, we just watched them. That they didn't go in the deep part. They they weren't very unruly, really. Most of the children were just happy to be splashing. They loved going down the slide. We just had to watch out for their good. Hmm. Were the spinning tops yeah. at the deep end then? Yeah. They, oh, they did like that, didn't right. they? Right. I know kids tried to climb on the aeration yeah. fountain and then that they, was they uh, go around, yeah. Right. And um, there, Gary, well, no, it wasn't Gary. I can't remember the older man's name. He was married and he and his wife were in a little cottage. And they had a little boy, Gary. Do you remember Gary? Carr? I've heard of him, yes. Well, he was just a little baby. He was only nine months old when his dad threw him in the swimming pool. And it wasn't any time at all that little year old kid could just swim across that pool like that. Just for the record, so there was a vacuum cleaner outside. But we're okay. We will continue. Right. <laughs> So, uh, the Carr family taught the children to swim early, or they tossed them in. <laughs> well, just that one. Just that one boy. <laughs> but, of course, they all were swimmers. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Did you ever have a bicycle that you rode I to? I never had a bicycle. You never did? Uh, oh, you know, Dad Carr had an amusement park with a roller rink. Did you skate down there? Roller skate? Well, that. And he also had one on uh, Lincoln on Way. Yeah, Lincoln Way. Yeah. The, the old auditorium uh, from the cemetery. Right. Right. Right down there. Mm hmm. The old field house. Well, they used it. Um, well, that was a football field. Uh huh. And then they used that. That's where I graduated from that old stadium. My land. Football. My land. It was real popular. Huh. Oh. Well, would you skate on the sidewalks and streets as well? Yeah, what? Would you roller skate on the sidewalks and streets as well? Oh, around my. town? I probably wore out five or six pairs of hmm. skates that you clamped on your feet and you had right. to use a key. A key. Um, any place in town where there was a hill. Um, one of our favorite places was out, I think, on Oakland. There's a, I don't know if it, you would still consider, consider it a hill, but we would skate out there just to go down that big long hill. And another one was 
Judge Lee lived on the corner of uh, Burnett and 10th. All right. And he had a lovely driveway up to his house. And he didn't object. We'd go up and down his driveway. Oh. And 10th Street itself was pretty. Especially Adam Moonlight and I were a gang of us teenagers. Oh. Go roller skate. Didn't cost a thing. No. All for free. <laughs> and or sometimes we went down to the depot and watched the trains come in. That right. didn't cost anything. Right. One day we were lucky we saw Rudy L.A., the singer. He and his wife got off the train for a while. We got oh, to see them. Goodness. Other nights we'd go down. And you know how you had to go down on the steps underneath to go over to the other. Yes, that uh, tunnel. The other track. And. Uh, just for fun, we'd go over and we'd pretend we're looking for somebody. We'd look around the crowd, look at the tray, and look for somebody. We never did find them. <laughs> Didn't cost anything. No. It sounds like you were very clever at finding fun things to do as a teenager. Well, I had friends that were the same way. We didn't have money. Oh. Did I you? had a wonderful childhood. I had one of... The nice thing about my friendships, my father was considered a working man. Most of my friends were children of professional people, but I never, never was made feel any different. My friends just accepted me. It, it bothered my mother a little bit because she felt inferior to the nurses. In her hometown, her family was the elite family. Mm. And she, here she felt, she, she was an eighth grade graduate, a very valuable lady, but she mm. never did get over the feeling that she didn't fit in mm. the Ames high educated people. Mm. So she was just a little bit of an introvert. And she maybe let me, she wanted to think, it bothered her that I should accept things from people who were better mm. than I was. Uh, Speaking of having fun, in high school, when you were a little bit older, uh, what did you and your friends do for fun? Were there dances? Were there fun activities for high school kids? We, uh, oh yes, and I had a certain group there. There must have been, oh, 16 of us that kind of hung out together. They were all good kids. They didn't smoke or drink, and so many of them. Our parents let us have dances in our home. We could roll up the rugs and dance at home. We didn't go to public dances. No, I had a great time. We uh, had one night, I never will forget the night, we had a progressive, progressive dinner. And our parents encouraged it. We went to about five different homes for a progressive dinner. The boys all dressed up. We had a wonderful time. Did you ever have an opportunity to meet the young people or do things with the people on the west side of the town? Or did you feel that the downtown kids and the west side kids sort of kept to College the, kids. Well, not the college kids, but you know there were kids that were professors' kids on the west side of town. Then there were kids that were sort of on the east side of the town. Did you feel they blended or did you always kind of feel a little different? Uh. We always referred to them as the college kids. Oh, you would? <laughs> but in ninth grade, they came down to high school, and we blended, but they were still the college kids. Mm -hmm. All through high school, they were the college kids, mm. the downtown kids, mm. but they mixed pretty good. Good. Mm. It, it was a lot of personalities, and mm -hmm. it, it worked all right. Mm. Well, the borderland was sort of at Brookside Park. Did you ever go there? Go where? At Bo uh, Brookside Park. Oh, yes. Was, do you remember the zoo that used to be there? The what? There was a zoo at one time. Right. I went there when I was just a few years old. When I was a child, I spent a good deal of my time in Dr. and Mrs. Beam's home, who was next door. I went in and out like it was my own house. Hmm. My mother never worried. If I was missing, I'd be over there. Mrs. Bean's father was in, she was taking Lena with him. I called him Grandpa, and he had a little old 
hand, long hair, scruffy dog, Buff. And he used to take me along the walk. We'd take out and go on long walks. And we, mm -hmm. we often landed over to Brookside Park. And I was about four, three, mm -hmm. well, even though I was a little older than four, four and five. He took me on a lot of walks. Mm -hmm. And he learned, taught me how to play pitch when I was four. Mm -hmm. I, and I loved Annie Beam's kitchen. I just, I could draw you a picture of it. She had a wonderful big pantry underneath the stair, where the stair was there, and I just had everything in it. My mother had a little tiny kitchen, but this, turn it on a light, and all, everything was in there, shelves with pots and pans and everything, and her extra dishes. And then she had a huge big kitchen cabinet full of things. And she used to let me play with her things that's in the kitchen. And in the corner with a faucet, that was a sink. Everybody drank out of the same dipper. <laughs> you wouldn't do that today. <laughs> and she let me play. She had the most humongous china cupboard I have ever seen anywhere. And she let me, her son had been in the Philippines during the Philippine War, and he brought her a lot of different things. There was one chafing kit, copper chafing dish, and you could take it apart and do different things. She would let me play with that. Some of her other things, I was very careful. I didn't ever bring it. No, I, I just love going over to Annie Beam's house, and in the evening I'd go, we didn't have it in a closed porch for a while. They did the swing, so in the evening I quite often went over and sat in the swing with Annie Beam, and and then I did the same thing with the Walter Grove family. They lived across the street from me, on the corner, and he took care of his mother till she passed away. He was going to marry Ida's. I can't like her first day until his mother died. Oh. So he moved his house up across the, his, and nobody ever mentions Walter Grove. Oh. Do well, you have much history on him? Walter do. Grove mm -hmm. owned a lot of land, farmland, in okay, the northern yeah. part of Ames, yes. Oh, and his, in, go ahead. His, his house is across the fire station. His old home has moved over to the, across the, house, uh, the fire station, oh. and he built this lovely big home for Ida's. Mm. And I used to go in and out of their house, and he used to make uh, big wagons loads of corn, and, and they go in the basement. They had a lovely big bay and canned corn. I was about 11 o'clock. They put a butcher knife in my hand, let me cut corn. Oh, I was a busy lady. <laughs> <laughs> I now, I, did Walter and Ines have any children? Oh, no. They were uh, quite up in age before they got married. Mm -hmm. And then her sister, Mrs. Brockman, they lived a block. I can't think of his first name, Brockman. Her sister lives a block e west, west of us. Brockman? I can't think of his first name. Well, that, that's all right. Well, I remember there's some married E.R. Smith's daughter. Right. Well, you mentioned another way you earned money was by babysitting. Oh, yeah. You must have been pretty good at that. Uh, my sister and I were both in demand. Mm -hmm. I had three, Grace McCarthy, Mrs. Fellows, and a Mrs. Webb. I divided my time with them. They arranged their schedules, so I'd go from one to the other. And then I worked pretty much full time for Dr. Fellows in their mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Her father came to live with them, and uh, so he, they asked me to kind of come every day. Right. They took care of Sally, their youngest one. Right. Yeah, I did a lot of it. My sister did a lot of babysitting for the Walls family. Mm. Did you get paid for babysitting? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember how much? <laughs> My first one is the only one I remember, and that was Dr. Buck. 
the dentist. Mm. They lived just two houses north of us. She paid me five cents an hour. But she went ahead when I got a dollar, when I got to a dollar, she wrote me a check. So, oh, that was big money to get a dollar <laughs> check. She'd run, I didn't stay very long, she'd just run downtown her short trip. But uh, I took care of the two older boys, uh, Jim and Billy, and then Bobby came along. He was the cutest little guy you ever, I can still remember. He was so fat and pudgy, and could he ever sing? By the time he was little, he would sing, and he would come out of the corner of the corner of the streets. And he would just sing, a tiny tot. And Mrs. Clement across the street, she she would go over and offer him a cookie to sing. I can't, I can't remember what he sung. It was a Sunday school song. How 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 old were you when you were babysitting? Oh, eleven. Or eleven, twelve. twelve. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was as far away from home as I went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got older. I branched out, but mm -hmm. after school. Right. Well, returning to the roller skating, recently we salvaged some bricks from an old sidewalk in Ames, and as a kid, I remember rolling roller skating on bricks. Did you ever roller skate on bricks? No. This was mainly an old town, I guess. I don't. Oh, but unless it mm -hmm. was Grand Avenue. Mm -hmm. Would it have been Grand Avenue? At one time, they used. Uh, it was brick. Wooden, wooden blocks. Our there. road out on Tenth Street was Grand uh, Gra uh, Cinder Road. A lot of the alleys were cinders in, in that era. The road oh. past our house was just a cinder road. Uh huh. And then when they paved it. Uh, they didn't have thermos jugs or any way to carry water, uh -huh. and so the kids along the avenue would arm themselves with buckets and hoses, and then the men would holler out, water boy, water boy, water me now. So we would run mm -hmm. out with a, a pail or a dipper mm -hmm. or something to water the workers on the mm -hmm. uh, pa they paving 10th mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't know what the year that would have been. Yeah. I was quite small. Yeah. I had in my notes that we had the same piano teacher, Dorothy Giebelstein. Yeah. And you had another one too, Mrs. I believe. Mrs. Jackson. Jackson, right. Mrs. Jackson. Mm -hmm. That was before Mrs. Giebelstein. Uh -huh. So you would go to their home for the lessons? Yeah. Well, Mrs. Jackson lived in a little house just behind us, and then I babysat her children to pay for my lessons. Oh, right. Right. Interesting. Did you know Talbert McRae? Oh, yes. His granddaughter was in Ames last week and I helped host them. His daughter was... Rebecca. Jo I'm talking about Rebecca. Oh, I was thinking it was Josephine. Oh, uh -huh. right. Yeah, Josephine was another one, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't remember her yeah. as much as I do the son. Right. You said they visited your home one time. Yeah, my mother was quite upset to have somebody from the university mm. visit. Mm. Well, Daddy and Mr. McRae were real good pals. Mm. He, he, Daddy had cut his hair for years. Certainly. He's a wonderful singer. Right. Well, going back to your father, wasn't he a charter member of the Isaac Walton League of Ames? Yes, yes. Founder. Founder. That, that's what I thought. There were some uh, big names in there. Uh, Vanderwilt, Louis Vanderwilt, mm -hmm. Ole Smetall and mm -hmm. all. Yeah, that was when they were making the lake, building the lake out there. There was, were some brothers. Some brothers, Al? Alice Brothers? Hmm, could be. Uh, not sure on it. Woody Buck, do you remember him? Oh, yeah. Norval Curry, George Clark. Oh, yes. Yeah. Rex Gilchrist. Yes. Yeah, Ed Gibbs, these were all. Had the, had the 
coal company. Right, Gilchrist, right. Oh. Yeah. I thought you might what know you those. Son Sandy was in my class. Sandy Gilchrist? Oh. I think he was in my class. You know, I was going through the Ames High School spirit of 1935 when you graduated, and I ran across any number of names. This copy of the spirit that we have at the Historical Society is the property of Northa Glee Cooper. Yeah. I bet you remember her yeah. as well. How about Valeria Tyrannus, one of the, um, yes, the Spanish-speaking families? Uh, uh, right. Family. And I think you knew my mother's cousin, Theta Van Patter. Yeah. John Vanderlinden. Oh, he was one of my good friends. My land. Amazing. How about Ellen Cole? She had a number of sisters, I believe. Yeah. Uh, we were real good friends. Our families were good. Ben Cole, her uncle, was, mm -hmm. was a good friend of my dad. Right, and, the builder. And they always used to include us in their family picnics. So I knew I was, he was in my class, but we all oh, knew the family. Okay, how about Charles Durham? Oh, yeah. He went on to be a millionaire. There's a building at the university named in his honor, helped restore the band shell downtown. He, he was kind of rather a... A stuck, I thought. Oh. A stuck up <laughs> fellow in high school. Interesting. Oh. But he wasn't stuck up here. <laughs> How about Lowell Greist? Was he by chance the son of the Greist father, uh, son? Yes, but of I, the didn't, doctor? I didn't know him, bro. Oh. I didn't know him. Yeah, his parents were both doctors. That's kind of unusual. Right. How about. Anna Marie Nosbach. Yeah, she, I knew her real well. Now there was a Henry Nosbach that had a shoe the repair. That, yeah. Was that her father? That was her father. Oh, okay. That's that's very good. Well, you worked at Woolworths. <laughs> about what era? In the thirties? Early, early thirties. Oh, oh no, let's see. I graduated in thirty. Thirty-five. It must have been a year after that. Okay. Mostly on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. You said you were in the hardware department at one time. And the man came, I didn't know anything about her. The man asked me for a cotter pin. <laughs> I didn't know what a cotter pin was. Finally he said, well, it looks like a lady's hair pin. Oh, I finally found one. Found it. one. But I think I told you, I was dating an Iowa State student, and he would come in to take me home. And it was one night he came in, he was singing, I found a million dollar baby in a five pence store. <laughs> That's I just a classic. I was so embarrassed. Oh, I was embarrassed. He thought it was funny, <laughs> but I was embarrassed. Do you recall your wages then, what you were getting an hour? Probably a dollar, a dollar oh, eighteen oh. an hour. Oh. Better than babysitting. <laughs> it's a little better than a dollar, eighteen cents more maybe. <laughs> That's great. But I would like to say that from the time I was starting to earn money, I kept track, I had an account book. My grandfather encouraged me, and um, to this day I love bookkeeping. All through my junior high years, high school, that was one of my A subjects. I took two years of bookkeeping. Miss Spots was my bookkeeping oh. teacher. She gave me an extra 2% of it, gave me an A in bookkeeping. I just love bookkeeping. Today, I struggle trying to keep my book, but she and I don't agree on how to keep books exactly. <laughs> I still struggle to keep books. But I love to keep books. My grandpa, grandma always said, if, I say, if you earn a dime, save a nickel. And that taught mm. me just that I must save it. I always had a little bit of money stored mm. away somewhere. 
You didn't by chance have Miss Canvin for typing. Yeah, two years of typing. Mm. Mm -hmm. I tried shorthand, but I missed the first two weeks of school. That girl mm. had a bad, uh, well, what did they call it? A quincy? Oh. They called it a quincy in my throat, and they had it on oh, right on my throat. And uh, I missed two weeks of, two weeks. Oh. My first two weeks of shorthand, so I quit. I just couldn't right. make up. But I didn't have the two years of time. Fee. Well, amazing. Yeah, though that would be a critical time to miss. Yeah. Well, she was amazing. a wonderful teacher. Were there any clubs that you could belong to in high school? Oh, there were numerous clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a religious club called Girls Reserve. And did I you belong to that? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I still have a ring that we had, and the uh, library or book, I, book club or library, I guess I called it the library. I love the library. Well, I, I see was in a few plays, nothing exceptional. Hmm. I was always the goofy one. <laughs> well, according to spirit, you were vice president of your homeroom. You were on student council with Perry Dodds. Oh, Perry, really? Perry Dodds. I saw his picture here. He and I. I think he was the president. Hmm. I was vice president that year. Dramatic club, library club, and girl reserves. <laughs> You're busy. Not, not as busy as some other <laughs> other students, but. Huh. So when you were dancing in high school, did you have live bands or did they use a phonograph oh, yeah. player? Oh, no, that, they, they all had outside bands, oh. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. They had outside bands. So at home when you rolled up the carpet, was that a phonograph player oh, yeah. then? That don't, oh, you don't remember. They, they, uh, it was a broadcast from the hotel on Saturday Oh, night. I see, the radio. Uh, did they call that radio show? Uh, they were always running bets as to who was going to have the music of the year. But we, oh, we oh. did a lot of dancing to Chicago stations. Oh, wonderful. I can't remember the ballroom's names. They had some pretty fancy ones. Mm. Well, you remember when television first came in then from oh, W.I. I think my father probably had the first one in mm. mm. It was a big round speaker like and you had a big dial and it had three dials on it. You had to get each dial perfect match mm. the other. Had outside antenna. Mm. The neighbors all flocked in to see it. Mm. So did you go downtown for movies? Oh. Collegian theater? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Saturday afternoon you went down to mm -hmm. see Tom Mix. Oh, right. Did you ever go out to campus town to those theaters? Not very often, not as a youngster. I Just the Capitol that. and Collegian. Yeah. Varsity. Varsity, right. Varsity was oh, out the mm -hmm. campus. Not, not as a young person, mm -hmm. but after I got older, I mm -hmm. would, maybe had a date or something. Well, well, the owner of the chain of theaters, Joe Gerbrock, was quite an entrepreneur. Right. He would have parades that ended yeah, up at right. a theater. Do you remember some of those kiddie parades? Maybe oh. you were in some of them. Oh, uh, I don't exactly remember. Um, I, I went to the show you had on his life. Mm -hmm. I remember a lot of his activities. I remember how he had a wedding. Mm. Let, let them have a wedding on the stage. Mm. And he used to have dollar bank night. Mm. And he gave one, uh, one year he gave $1,000. And our neighbors won the $1,000. Oh, they were so thrilled. He was always thinking of some activity. Exactly. And I, I think maybe I mentioned the one about picking the dandelions. 
Um, no. Ames was just overcome with dandelions. Of course, they didn't have sprays in those days. And he, with the city council, they arranged that if you picked a, a bushel of dandelions, you got a dollar a ticket to the theater. Well, man and child, a woman and anybody were digging the dandelions. And the, the big seat was once you got a bushel, we'll take it right in before it shrunk, shrunk down. You want to make sure to have your full bushel. <laughs> but uh, it was amazing that they really did clean up the dandelions. Oh. It was amazing. Do you remember how old you were when they did that? I was probably eight or nine, ten. Long. So it would have been 1926 Set. or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Old enough to hold a knife. <laughs> <laughs> that created a lot of excitement. Well, back of the Collegian Theater was Moore's Dairy, opposite uh, the school, middle school. Oh, yeah. Did you hang out there much? Quite often, oh, there's especially milk, and milk. There was uh, uh, O'Neill Dairy also. Yeah, that was down the street. Mm -hmm. That was the mm -hmm. original dairy. Right, now. right. No, um, mm -hmm. but uh, the other one, I think they had a specialty. I don't know whether it was malt or milk or milk shakes. No, it was so easy to run across the street. Right. Have a treat. Right. How about Rainbow Cafe? Did you ever go there? Oh, right. That was a popular That's, place. That was a popular place. Mm -hmm. Very popular. Uh, was that the one that was run by the Greeks? Yes. The Greek yes. Greek. That's Greek. right. I can't think of their name. Right. Another Greek family had a restaurant by the name of Frangos. Yes. Yeah, that Frango. was very popular. Frangos. Mm -hmm. Did you eat out much at restaurants? No. My, as a family, we never did, mm -hmm. and I know later years, I, when I knew differently, I thought most people ate at home. Mm -hmm. I was so surprised when stories about Farmer Brown came out, how they ate it down at the hotel every Sunday. They ate, ate mm -hmm. out of the hotel. Mm -hmm. I began to realize that people, more wealth-to-do people, would eat their meals out at right. the hotel. Right. Another Ames institution was Collegiate Manufacturing Company. Did you know any of the women that were employed there? Oh, I knew of people that worked there. It was mm -hmm. quite a place. It was. They, they uh, hired a lot of people. It seems like half the women in Ames and Story County worked there. Yes. And I think was it, it was after the war, or was it during the war? What years did they have? They had a special project during the war yes. uh, as well, and they got an award for that. Yes. They made synthetic raincoats for the troops yeah. and, uh, and ponchos. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did a lot of good work for the war situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right across from the Adams Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. So did you patronize the library, which was also across the street, the public oh, library? Yeah. By the time I was about three or four years old, my brother mm -hmm. loved to read. Do you remember the little theater, that little diorama? I don't remember that as much as I remember. I could draw you a picture of the mm -hmm. library, how we went up the steps and and, <laughs> and the children's books were on the west side. They were on the bottom. You had to sit on the floor. But the worst part, you could only take out two. Oh. And I would have liked to take it out a lot more. Right. But my brother and I, especially in the summer months, we trekked down there a lot and got books. And mm. at home, mother had what we call, used to call an army cot in our extra room. And we'd go in there and lay there and read books together. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Did you ever go to Saturday morning story hour at the library? That I was think, very popular. I think that came after I grew ah, up. Mm -hmm. I don't think they had it mm -hmm. then. Was the librarian when you were there by chance Davidson. Letha Davidson? Davidson. It yeah. was. Uh -huh. When I was in high school, she was there. Right, right. Uh, A great institution. I'm 
I wrote a, I wrote a piece that was in the paper about the library. How it was oh. a gathering spot, the teenagers. Mm. Mm. We had to go to the library after supper. Mm. Meet your friends. Mm. Sit out on front pieces and talk a bit. That was an excuse, of course. <laughs> we just had to go to the library. <laughs> Did you ever go out to Visha? Oh, yeah. For the yeah. parade, for the activities? The good old Visha, the way it was nice. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, oh, I, I, we had to get uh, excuses from home to go in the May time. Oh. And I thought it was so wonderful. I wish it could be that way. All mm. the departments had such wonderful displays. Right. I remember particularly the ceramic department. I, I mm. bought a, a blue salt and pepper shaker. Oh. There and some ear brewed white striped earring. And you oh, got free uh, pies. Oh yes, cherry, cherry pies. pies. Oh. I actually cold. Yeah. Did you see the horses too? The horse barns? Oh yeah. Oh, the military. Oh, the military. military. Yeah, the military ones. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that. Uh, I I still I don't I don't know when they stopped having that, but the, um, I don't know whether it's doctor or professor Sir Kaiser. Do you know from the university? He and his wife are both oh. here. Do you know anything of him? He no. was with the, in the military, in the military department for oh, years, oh. and he and his wife are both here now. But I, I don't know oh. whether he was ever involved in any of the circuses or not. Right. Oh, he never missed those. Mm. They were the old armory. Mm. Last time we talked, you mentioned that you remember the push ball competition. I do. I those do, were and huge. I don't. I've seen oh. pictures of it, and I, I heard my dad talk mm -hmm. about it. And there are some pictures out here in the hall of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. I, I, it was about quite small. Mm -hmm. Do you remember uh, Stars Over Visha when it was held outside under the stars Absolutely. at night? Absolutely. My husband was in it in the spring of 1939. Mm. They had some men from this one dormitory. Short ones on the end, tall ones in the middle, had little grassy skirts on, <laughs> and they just looked so silly. <laughs> uh, and they sang a song, Quitcha, 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 Twitcha, Oh, the eyes. <laughs> and uh, how did your husband get that part in that Stars Over Visha? Was he, was he a student at that time? Oh, yeah. He was a student at that time. He was a student at that Okay. And he graduated in animal science. Mm -hmm. And my husband really was. Uh -huh. oh. Okay. How did you meet him? We worked in the printing office in the basement of Morrill Hall. Oh, my God. <laughs> he was a student. I was a mimeograph operator. Oh, my God. He came in on his off hours. He worked at a big round table where they assembled. Uh, and printing, you can't imagine the change in printing, how mm -hmm. they used to have, everything was typed on stencils. They had right. racks of stencils that had to be cleaned and hung in a category. And they had about three mimeographs. They were straight mimeographs. One had a slip sheet on it that you could slip a sheet paper in between. Oh. And then they had... Uh, is it the collator or clatter? Collator, I suppose. And an envelope folder. Um, and, and then they had this big round table where they um, assembled them. And they had over 2,000 of the 4-H record, uh, record manuals a year. My land. We had to print them. That was their big job of the year. Indeed. It was a very interesting place. I learned a lot to learn how to take care of the machine. Mm. And I've had lots of, we had a lot of several nice parties. Mm. It was a great gang mm. to work for. Did you ever go to the Great Hall in the Memorial Union for events? Dances or oh, a lot of dramas? The, a lot of the concerts? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were always the first one there and the last one to leave. <laughs> um, one of the first ones that went with my husband, I had never had a Coke in my life. And um, a bunch of my high school friends were there at that. We sat at this long table, great uh, oak table, that basin. Well, comments, and, right. And during the intermission, the girl came around to take our order. So my husband ordered a lemon Coke, and he looked at me, and, and I, I, well, I said, well, I guess I'd try it. Cherry Coke, maybe? Cherry Coke. Yeah. What did I say? Lemon. Um, yes, I guess it was a Cherry Coke. And anyway, so she was, she went around, got all these orders, he came in. She had 11 cherry cokes on her tray. And so everybody got a free l l cherry coke. So we always laughed about that. Get us there, that way we get some extra ones. <laughs> right. There's one more story I want to hear about Ida Ida. Oh, well, she was a girl from Denmark and she moved in. Uh, she was in my class. She was a little kind of a mouse-like girl, I guess she was. She was very small, and timid, blonde hair, typical Norwegian type mm. of girl. And we became friends. She just lived a block north of us. And I learned to say Kanasaka down, and which means, can you speak Danish? And um, so I don't know how I just always did it. And a couple of years ago, we were at the Dr. Skinner's office, and he had an assistant from Denmark there. And he was introducing us, and so far I knew I could knock it on. And, and she didn't know I could say it. I didn't realize I could say it. And the doctor just howled. <laughs> he couldn't imagine. He said, I hear I was 97 years old and I, and he said, I can't even remember some of the people. The people that, it just popped out. Amazing. So it was kind of funny. Did you take any foreign languages at any point? No. Mm. I skipped those. Mm. I'd rather take business courses. Mm. Well, you had mentioned that you learned to sew at age five or something, really, really young. Oh, my mother was a wonderful seamstress. She had an old fashioned singer pedal machine. Mm. By the force, she was letting me use it. So by the five, I, I made some doll clothes. Mm. I had a little tiny doll about this that I made some clothes oh. for. But she made me some wonderful clothes for my doll. Right. I think I gave you some. Yes. They were in a little, little uh, suitcase. We have that. Yes. I think it was... Uh, 2010 when you gave us a number of things. Remember the push scooter that yeah. was purchased at Car Hardware? Some of your childhood uh, toy beaters, you know, from the kitchen and all. Uh, Wonderful collection. We appreciate and, and, that. And uh, Tootsie Toy Furniture. Tootsie Toy Furniture, another category. Yeah, I'm surprised. People have forgotten it. it was Just so gems. Popular. Yeah, we it treasure was, those. It would cost 25 cents a box for a room. Right. That was so cute. That's and a full hour of babysitting. <laughs> if it's 25 cents a room, you'd have to babysit a full hour to get that. <laughs> I think some of it was given to me. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and you gave us a Rushing's shopping grocery basket when they were actually baskets, not bags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was another era. <laughs> oh, that's the story about the Rushing family. They had a the grocery store. Mm hmm. They had a little girl, Mary, and she lived next door to the O'Neill family who lived up oh, north of us. Right. And one day, Mary, Mrs. Mrs. O'Neill tells the story. Oh. One day, Mary goes over to visit her, and she says, well, What did you do yesterday, Mary? She says, Oh, I worked for Daddy. Oh, what did you do? I put the biggest strawberries on top of the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. She was a cute little girl. She were for her daddy. She gave away trade secrets. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Did you have any act 
interaction with uh, Mesvinsky's, any of their grocery stores? Oh, yeah, he was such a man. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we went to his uh, program, right? Right. His right. sons were there. Right. He was quite a man. Yeah, an icon. <laughs> I have told the story that the day I was visiting with him, I, he was building a new store up on uh, uh, Grand, and uh, I said, well, are you having an architect? He says, I don't need an architect to tell me what I want. <laughs> the buildings, and he built the building, and that one's a good, well built building. Right. <laughs> Not a cheapy. <laughs> and he did a lot of well, and good, too. Yeah. His house is on the corner of Ninth. Ninth and Duff, that's right. Eighth, eighth, Duff? Yeah, Ninth and Duff, right. That brick one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember when it was built. It was kind of the show place at the time. It was, it was. Mm -hmm. Did you know Ed or Norton or the daughter? Yes, I. they have a child now. Mm -hmm. They're Clintons or their grandparents. That's right, that's right, that's right. I guess yeah. he got out a lot. Out of all his problems he had. He's, he's moving on, that's that's right. That's right. They were older than I was, so I didn't really, I just mm -hmm. knew of them. Mm -hmm. I, I was a teenager. BJ, did you have things that you wanted to have covered? I can't think of anything. Okay. Mary, are there some stories that you'd like to tell us yet? You have a good stock of them. Well, I think I was a very, very lucky person. Although we were poor, I didn't feel poor. Um, I mother made all my clothes. I was envy of some people. Mm. My clothes were so cute. Mm. I didn't mind. In fact, one of the Helen Tice insisted that my mother make her some like mine. Hmm. I thought that was quite me. I I just feel sort of blessed that people accepted me for what I am. Not that my father they have no grudges against me because my father was a working man hmm. and people had, thought my dad was a great person. He was a great person. Mm -hmm. He was very compassionate. And, and he was only an eighth grade person. Mm -hmm. But he he knew a lot about humanity. Mm -hmm. So I all in all, and I had a wonderful husband. He was so good to too good maybe. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes I'd want to buy something. Say, well, if you can figure out how to buy it, we can probably have it. And we never bought anything that we didn't check. I went with him to buy farm equipment. We bought cars together. We thought our mm. uh, recreational together. Mm. We always more or less had one purse, which is impossible today. Mm. I didn't work too much away from the home. Mm. I was just busy. I was. I feel real grateful for extension, the Farm Bureau. Mm. I feel I've had such a wonderful education working with the Farm Bureau people. I've gone to such wonderful meet. I've met wonderful people from all over the world. Same way mm. with extension. We've gone to meetings all over the United States. Mm. I've experienced wonderful trips all because of extension, and mm. the Women's Farm Bureau is just fantastic. I went to so many cooking schools, home baking schools, and I was a 4 H -er leader, I learned that. I just mm. learned so much, I think I learned more than I would have learned going to school. Probably. And uh, for a while my husband was um, the first director of the Iowa Railroad, after he retired from extension, he oh, wow. he uh, took the job of being the first I would the first director of the Iowa Rural Association, and I was a subsecretary. His secretary, his secretary for the office 
came to work for her, but I was her secretary. I assisted her with the mail and some of the things. And from that, I learned so much about the farming industry, the rural water. I traveled mm. with him. Mm. He had a lot of, had to plant some big banquets. We put, his secretary mm. and I planned big banquets at Hilton the Hotel. Mm. I just, I just, been so lucky at having all these one outside, and we traveled, mm -hmm. we traveled in a pickup here. Mm -hmm. I think we had every state but Vermont. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think I've just mm -hmm. been blessed. He must have been on the road a good portion of the time. Uh, I, he insisted I go with him most every oh. place he went. Oh. He always wanted me with him. Good. So I went. Our girls were growing up and on their own. Mm -hmm. Were you married in Ames then? No. That's rather a personal story. Oh, oh um, that's all right. I, w I was Another marrying place. a Catholic, and my parents were unhappy about it. <laughs> so we were married in my husband's church in Fort Dodge. Oh, my goodness. But the good Lord took care of it. <laughs> they, they, my husband. Uh, my dad always liked my husband, but my mother was brought up as a very strong Baptist. It was very hard for her to tell my grandparents, <laughs> you know, I was going to go straight down. <laughs> but mind. nobody loved anybody. My mother loves my husband. She just loved him to death. Oh, and he great. loved her, too. That's great. So, good Lord took care of it. Wonderful. Yeah. Do you think of anything else, PJ? Just to say thank you for sharing your thoughts with us oh, and yeah. for sharing your stories. It's been oh, a pleasure. Thank you for letting us come to visit. Well, you're very okay. welcome. I appreciate it. Thank I you just so think much. Ames is a very, very special place. I hate seeing it be this big. Mm. I wish it would stay like it did mm. when I was in junior high. 10,261. <laughs>